As another example, let's consider a bar that's built in at both ends, and this time it's going to be subjected to a change in temperature. And let's try and figure out what the internal force field, internal stress field, internal strain field, and the displacement field for the bar looks like. And we'll assume that the cross-sectional area modulus and coefficient of thermal expansion are all going to be constant. So first of all, uh, note that if we draw a free body diagram of the entire bar, it's going to be subjected to reaction forces at the left and the right. And there are two unknown reaction forces. And there's one equation of equilibrium again. So this is a statically indeterminate problem. So we'll go ahead and use the same technique as the force method. We'll go ahead and assume one of the reaction forces is known. So let's go ahead and assume that R1 is known. So we'll have R1 applied at the left end, and we'll have a change of temperature, and the bar will be built in at the right end. Okay. So first, let's go ahead and have a look at what the internal force field looks like. So if I make a section cut anywhere along the length of the bar, I'll have this free body diagram as shown here. I have the internal force field as, as drawn. And it's in that or unit normal direction, as we always do by convention. It's subjected to a temperature change delta T. And on the left side, it has the force R1. And so by simple equilibrium, that means that R of x is equal to R1. So we already have that. And I can then quickly also compute expressions for the stresses, the strains, and the displacements in the bar. Okay. Now, remember again, R1 is, is an unknown in this setup, so we have to determine what R1 is. But I know that the bar is actually built in at both ends, so I know that the displacement at 0 is equal to the displacement at L, which is equal to 0. So if I use those two facts and I, I go ahead and use this expression here for the displacement field, I'll find that 0 equals R1 L over AE plus alpha delta TL. So all I've done there is I've used this expression for the strain inside that integral and then set x equal to L in that expression. Well, I can solve that equation there for R1. That tells me that R1 is equal to minus alpha delta T AE. So if you heat the bar and alpha is positive, R1 is going to be a negative number. So that's going to put the bar entirely into compression all the way along its length. So we can now go back and we can evaluate all our expressions for our internal fields. We find that we have this compressive internal force field everywhere. The stresses will be compressive. They're minus alpha delta T E. But the strains are 0. And the displacements of every material point are 0. So this is an example of some of the oddities that can occur with indeterminate problems in particular. Here I have 0 motion, 0 strain. but I do have stresses and I have internal forces.